uh, welcome to Monterey. We're so glad to see you here. Uh, come here, spend money. The state of California needs it desperately. Although uh, most of the news is really being covered by uh, Arnold's love baby. But anyway, so first, welcome to Monterey. And welcome to our gem at Solomar. So we're so glad that you're here. I wasn't able to be here last year, so I'm particularly happy to be able to share some time with you today um, here at the Apple Camp 2011. Uh, this was the weekend for graduation at California State University, Monterey Bay. That's where I'm a professor emeritus. It's the best sort of professor you could be. You get a free parking pass and have no committee meetings you need to go to. Uh, but I think we should give a round of applause to our cameraman here who graduated yesterday. Brad's from the Teledramatic Arts Program. Anyway, I thought I'd do, uh, since I'm here, do a little bit of reminiscing, thinking back. It's been some 15 years that I've been here in Monterey, but prior to that I was at Chico State, and while I was at Chico I took leave and left to a little firm called Designware. So back in the 80s, I don't know if you remember this uh, picture, but uh, home family computing, but back in the 80s, um, we were working in this area, this very exciting thing called, does anybody know what this is? CD, but we were doing interactive video disc, disco vision. Um, so we were going to be doing educational technology using video disc. Um, in that process, we didn't make much money, so we had to earn a living. So we ended up doing a computer literacy program at that time for SRA. And SRA was an IBM firm, but they didn't have a computer at the time. But they did get in bed with the Atari 400 and 800. Anybody remember those? Okay. And so we did a computer literacy book for them, which upon delivery they found out that nobody owned Atari 400s or 800s at that moment. And so we redid it for Apple Computer. Um, the interesting part of that story is we'd actually gone to Apple a year before and tried to sell the concept to them for about a tenth of what IBM sold them, the, uh, the book to them eventually. So this was passed out with the Apple C chip. But um, while we were in San Francisco with a firm called Designware, this company came to us, then they had a bright idea, and as Warren said, that company was called Spinnaker. And this is the cover of Spinnaker a face maker, and for those of you who don't have gray, uh, Spinnaker face maker basically looked a little bit like this. Oops, let me go back. There we go. So there was a face, and you would add a mouth, an eyes, a nose, and they play Simon. Now, I thought I'd sort of make a personal story about it. This one of the things that was so exciting about the face maker. And I'm going to get to use Warren's new pointers that you got here. Anybody notice something special about uh, this menu here from an Apple computer back in the 80s? There is a prize for a person who figures this out. You get a copy of the 1991 Scientific American issue on communication, computers, and networks, how to work, play, and strive in cyberspace with Senator Al Gore. This is a famous issue where uh, Al was credited with the, uh, inventing the internet. So anybody know what's fancy about this? What? It had upper and lower case. At this point, the IBM only, the Apple IIe was only upper case, and so we used graphic characters, and so you were able to do upper and lower case. It was magic. Think of that as a UI. Such magic, you do upper and lower case. Well, somebody's going to win. I got two of them, so you guys have to be honest. Whoever got it right, you can come get your copy of the, the magazine. So what I wanted to, to say, the, the company, uh, uh, Designware, which was at the old China Basin building, but that summer we hired a programmer who just graduated from college uh, named Clark Quinn to do programming for Facemaker. Now, we did this for a work for hire, and that's one reason I'm back in the, at the academy, because had we had a fraction of a penny for all that Spinnaker sold, I would not be here speaking to you now. I'd be in my uh, Hawaiian Island enclave. But uh, Clark is now a Quinnivision. Clark uh, was, uh, did our programming, and then Clark and I were talking many years later, and he said, John, it was very interesting. You did all the talking, and we did all the work. So he decided he'd become a college professor. 
uh, became a college professor, and now most recently did a book on engaged learning. It's just uh, going to be releasing a book this fall uh, on mobile learning. And uh, I told Clark I was going to speak here, and he said, you know, it's good to know that there is life after starting with games in, uh, in the 80s. Okay, so I'm not sure which came first in terms of the chicken or the egg, but um, it's interesting with Dutch Dust and Magic that, that here, Warren, that you pulled together an incredible crew for an exciting uh, two and a half days, so I'm glad to have the opportunity to be a part of it. As the local, if I could give you any help on information about the aquarium, how to get a tea time at Pebble Beach, you know, anything that you need to know, I, I will tell you how to do it or that you don't really want to. And the Pebble Beach, unless you're a really good golfer and you have about $580, that's not the course to go to. It's Bayonet and Black Horse, which is the secret course. But anyway, so with that, uh, invent the next world as you explored Best in Magic Camp 2011.